Hello everyone, I'm Jensine Bard, and welcome to Testimony, where truth is told, lives are changed, and hope is given. Revelation 12:11 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, a testimony of your story for His glory. With the call to the Great Commission, 50 years of ministry, world travel, a beautiful wife, and life, you would think my next guest might rest on a laurel or two. Not so. For this evangelist and best-selling author, his latest, which we will talk about today, The Assyrian Prophecy of a Trade Broken Nation Destined to Rise Anew from the Martyr's Blood. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome to testimony in a National Religious Broadcasters Convention special, a high honor indeed, founder and president of SUSAC Evangelistic Association and Faith Walk Ministries International, Dr. Ron Susek. Dr. Susek, Ron, if I may, welcome to testimony. Jensen, it's a privilege to be here with you. I've heard so much about you, and I'm glad to be here. Well, thank you. The honor is all mine. Let's get right to it. Who are the Assyrian people, and what compelled you to write about the Assyrian mm -hmm. prophecy? Well, let's begin with who they're not. They are not the Syrians. They are Assyrians. These are the Assyrians found in your Bible in the Old Testament. They are the descendants of one of Noah's 16 grandsons named Asher. And so they have been living in Mesopotamia, northern Iraq. In, and Mesopotamia means the land between the rivers, between the Tigris and Euphrates. They've been living there for 4,000 years. So they are the historic legal owners of the land. And um, they, they became a mighty empire for a thousand years. And partly because they were the first ones to find metal and make metal weapons. <laughs> and so they were able to subject all the surrounding nations very quickly. And so for a thousand years, they were the king of the hill. Then the Babylonians and four other nations went together and finally brought them down in 612 BC. Then they kind of floundered for about six to seven hundred years, and then here's what people do not know because this truth never got to the West. I, I can't tell you how many hours I spent in research. This book is heavily researched, documented, so people are getting facts. Shortly after the resurrection, Thomas, St. Thomas, Theodius, and Bartholomew went to northern Iraq, preached the gospel like Noah did. These people responded to Noah. They went to northern Iraq and preached the gospel, and the entire nation, they were the first nation in history to turn to Jesus Christ as a nation. They took the gospel very seriously, and they took the Great Commission seriously. And what also has never made our history books is that they became the greatest evangelistic force ever recorded in history. They took the gospel from, from northern Iraq, and by the way, this was during the so-called Dark Ages. The Dark Ages are only called the Dark Ages because we don't have records. They weren't dark. The Assyrians were traveling all the way from Mesopotamia to China. Marco Polo wrote about seeing them in China, in the high courts of China, the Chinese called them the luminous religion. They were spreading advanced medicine, philosophy, and the gospel all across the Middle East, all the way to China, and all the way down to India. And they swept 80 million converts into the body of Christ. And that happened within a few short centuries. Then came the 700s when Islam was on the rise with the sword and began to beat them down. And then uh, beyond that, in like the 1300s, came Genghis Khan and uh, Tamerlane, who followed him 100 years later. These men mercilessly beat them into the ground. Then we come to World War I. They were hiding in the Hakati Mountains, they, which is in the uh, southern tip of Turkey, but it used to be their territory, and in, in other places. Well, the superpowers 
I'm talking about France and Britain. They made them a promise. Now think about this. They are prophesied to be a nation again. Now they're a nation, but they're scattered and they're not a sovereign nation. And so they were promised by Britain and France, both nations, if you help us win this war, World War I, we will protect you and give you your land back. The prophecy could have been fulfilled 100 years ago. And those two nations, through the League of Nations, at the end of World War I, betrayed them and walked out on the deal. They, they did not keep their promise. And through a series of events, that opened a massacre so the two-thirds, think about this, two-thirds of their entire nation was martyred by the Turks. Wow. And then they caught their breath from that. They fought for us again in World War II, and again they were betrayed. Now let's fast forward. We took out Saddam Hussein. Now, here's how you ask the question how I got involved in this. If I could roll the clock back again, about 30 years ago, I was reading the book of Isaiah and I saw this prophecy. It's so simple that a child can understand it. It's not like it's a mystery. Assyria, Egypt, and Israel, these three will worship together, which means they have to have one God, one belief system, one heart, one mind that you can't worship without that. So those three nations will be one spiritually and they will be a blessing to the entire earth. The Messiah is going to reign through those three nations. Israel, of course, is key. And um, when I saw that, Jen C, and I hate to say this, but I, I really, I leaned back in my chair and I, I was being facetious, but I said out loud, God, did you make a mistake? The Assyrians don't exist anymore. I didn't, no one knows they ever existed. They, they were lost to history. Well, I spoke on this at a national convention one time, and a man came out of the audience and he walked up on the platform and he said, Brother Ron, I've never heard anyone speak on that before. I've written two books about it. If you'll write the next book, I'll give you all of my research. I am an Assyrian. Wow. Wow. I got chills. I thought, I'm looking at Lazarus walking out of the grave. You're an Assyrian? So he introduced me to that whole Assyrian world. I began to get their news from other parts of the world for years. Just a quick question. Yeah. Was the Assyrian that you met here in the U.S. or He's overseas? He's a pastor in the U.S. in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And that's when I learned that there were a million and a half Assyrian Christians scattered around the world, many in California, Detroit, Chicago, Australia, Europe, because of the massacres of the past. But there was still, when we took out Saddam Hussein, I discovered there were a million and a half Assyrian Christians living in northern Iraq. Wow. Believe it or not, Saddam Hussein would often use them as his bodyguards because they were the only people he could trust. Why is that? Because they're Christian. They're loyal. When they make a commitment, they're committed. And uh, it was an amazing thing. Well, then we took him out. And that began a serious, serious matter in Iraq that America didn't know was taking place. Then ISIS came uh, in 2014, and that's when I'm sitting in my home. My wife and I were blessed with a lovely home because my parents left us some, some inheritance to work with. And I sat there saying, God, I cannot sit here in this comfort and watch my brothers and sisters be massacred. What can I do? And that's when that pastor's voice came back, write the next book. So I, I launched into massive, intense research to write the book because we think it's going to be a game changer. It's already making waves in Australia, in Germany, in Israel. In fact, a Jew has already called me from Israel to ask me if I would help him establish an Assyrian embassy in Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Dr. Ron Susek, evangelist, best-selling author, his latest must-read, The Assyrian Prophecy. To your point, that is the big question. 
Why write the book if strategic global efforts are not in place right. to help the Assyrian people? That's right. Can you continue speaking to that? I can. I did not write this book to inform people. I, I wrote this book to awaken people to begin a movement. We need millions of Christians to be convinced of this. That's why I have it very heavily documented so that they begin to press their pastors to preach on it and that they go to their governments and say, it's time now that we restore the Assyrians. And then the next book that I want to work on is the Egyptians. That would make sense. <laughs> okay, so then a question occurred to me while I was perusing your book, and it's this. What boots on the ground efforts are there to protect the Assyrian people in Mesopotamia right now? Accordingly, the Kurds who have been fighting ISIS are taking the homes of the Assyrians. How does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. Jensen, I am so disturbed. Uh, we need to rethink what we're doing because if we establish, we don't want to establish it, if we just protect them while they establish themselves as a nation once again, now the United States of America will have another democratic friend in the Middle East and the Jews will have a trustworthy friend 500 miles from Jerusalem. It would be a major, if you talk about, we have lost somewhere between six and eight trillion dollars as Americans in the Middle East. We have lost thousands of young people in bloodshed. And now we've pulled it out saying it was for nothing. No, it wasn't for nothing. If we will now rise up and simply say we are going to help protect these people while they become a nation, we will be planting in the Middle East, right in the heart of that madness, a great nation that is ready to be declared as a Christian nation representing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We will be putting three million missionaries in the back in the middle of the Middle East. Wow. That is phenomenal. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to internationally heralded evangelist, a best-selling author, and founder of SUSEC Evangelistic Association and Faith Walk Ministries International, his latest must-read, The Assyrian Prophecy, a betrayed and broken nation destined to rise anew from the martyr's blood. You can learn more about Dr. Susek's work, ministry, and mission by visiting the AssyrianProject.org and get his book, get informed, and then get involved in being a part of restoring a people and a nation for the gospel of Jesus Christ and who, in the end, are a part of God's great fulfillment of mm -hmm. end time prophecy and more. Dr. Susek, Ron, thank you for taking precious time to share your extraordinary and very well-researched work, the Assyrian prophecy, and what we as God's people can do about it in prayer, in purpose, in action, and in faith. We thank you, and God bless you. My privilege. Thank you for the honor. Testimony is a global broadcast made possible by the generous contributions of our valued partners at Jensen Bard Ministries and you, our listening audience. Together, we are reaching souls for Christ, one testimony at a time. If you would like information on how you can support this broadcast with your tax-deductible gift, please visit us at jensenbard.com. That's one word, J-E-N-S-I-N-E-B-A-R-D dot com. And join the conversation at our Facebook page, Testimony with Jensen Bard. Thank you for listening, and please join us again for Testimony. Testimony.